Hello guys and girls, another new exciting reInvent 2021 feature, EKS Cluster Autoscaler Carpenter Support. In this video, we will go over what are the challenges of existing Cluster Autoscaler with Autoscaling Group and how this new feature helps solve them. Alright, let's get started. Let's say you have EKS Cluster with one EC2 worker node running. That EC2 is of type M5 large which has two vCPU and you have two pods running in it. And then you deploy this deployment file. And in this deployment file, each pod is requesting 500 millicore of CPU and we need 20 replicas of those pods. So at this point, we need 500 millicore multiplied by 20 replicas, which is equal to 10,000 millicore of CPUs. One vCPU is 1,000 millicore, so we need 10 total vCPUs. So Kubernetes scheduler will schedule two more pods in this running EC2 worker node. And at this point, cluster autoscaler along with traditional autoscaling group will kick in and start provisioning new M5.large nodes. So let's say in another scenario, we have the worker node with two pods and seven more pods to be scheduled. So two pods will schedule in this node and then cluster autoscaler will keep on provisioning pods and then the last EC2 will have only one pod running. So what are some of the challenges with this? Number one, since cluster autoscaler with autoscaling group is provisioning multiple EC2s, it takes longer to spin up those instances. Number two, there is resource misutilization. The last EC2 is only running one pod, so most of the CPU and memory is being wasted. Now if we look at the same scenario with Carpenter, so let's say you have one worker node running with two pods and seven pods needs to be scheduled. Instead of spinning up multiple EC2s of the same type, Carpenter will spin up the appropriate EC2 node, let's say C5.2x large and put all the pods in the same EC2. So Carpenter will automatically provision right size node and since it's not provisioning multiple EC2s, it is faster. In general, Carpenter should be faster than traditional autoscaling group. So referring to a KubeCon 2021 presentation, next year's goal for Carpenter is one pod getting scheduled should be done in 15 seconds and thousand pods getting scheduled should be within 30 seconds. That's pretty fast. Now let's take a look at another real world cluster autoscaler with autoscaling group challenge. Let's say you have your Kubernetes cluster running, everything is good, and then a new deployment file comes in which is requesting a pod which requires GPU EC2. So in the deployment file, you can specify whether the pod requires GPU resources or not. So at this point, none of those EC2s can support GPU workload. So this GPU workload pod can be scheduled. So how do you solve this today? So the admin needs to get involved and create different node groups. So she will create a node group for compute nodes and all those existing running EC2s will be under that compute node group. And then she will create a GPU node group. And in that node group, you will specify that GPU instances can be spun up. So then a GPU instance will spin up and then your GPU workload will get scheduled. Now let's take a look at the same scenario, but this time with Carpenter. So let's say another deployment file gets deployed and we want to schedule this GPU pod. Carpenter will spin up the GPU EC2 accordingly and schedule the pod. So Carpenter provisions appropriate instances based on deployment without the need of creating separate node groups. And note that even in the previous example with traditional autoscaling group, you can mix different instance type in the same node group, but you can only put compatible instance types. The vCPU and memory of the instances in a traditional autoscaling group node group needs to be same. So going back to the previous example, you cannot mix this P4D instance with M5 large instance in a single node group. And Carpenter solves this problem. If you want to try this feature out, refer to the AWS release blog. I'll give the link in the description and you can follow the helm charts that's required 
to install Carpenter and then there is a step-by-step -step demo. Alright folks, that's it for this one. If you want to see more of reInvent 2021 videos, please subscribe to my channel, ask me any questions in the comment section, smash that like button and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.